Hi, Denise from Foursquare Micro Farm. And today I'm going to spin a little Angora for you. Okay, now, here I am. This is the shock um, ladybug. I'm not using the Louette for this one. And this is some um, tort French Angora. And I actually, I carded this uh, just because. I'm going to try to pull it out. And you know what? I ran this through my uh, 72 teeth per inch drum carter. And it, it just really came out really nicely. And uh, that's not a testament to my carding skills as much as it is to the actual durability of the fiber itself. So, and I carded it pretty much because it was just kind of jumbled into the bag. It's been stored in this bag for a while. And so it's not, um, not that I lay out my French Angora, but you know, once it's been compacted in the bag for a while, it kind of needs to be fluffed out. And I didn't, there's a lot of Angora for me to fool around with. I didn't want to do it by hand. So I drum carded this and I just pull apart the strips of Angora. And of course, I'm wearing a black skirt, so this is going to be great. Okay, now I'm setting up the wheel on the smallest swirl. And you know what? I don't know what the ratios are for this wheel. Uh, I never really thought about it. And I'm so used to the Louette where I just spin on whatever um, whirl I want to. And I, I change the yarn by hand. But this one, since it is double treadle and uh, it's set up for that, I just went ahead and set it up and made it, it makes things a little easier. Okay, so that looks all good. Put the brake band on. This is more adjusting than I ever do on the Louette. And at first I was like, oh no, what do I do? But kind of got it together now. So I'm just gonna tie that on. I just tie knots on. Nothing real fancy, you know? And I think a lot of it comes from being self-taught. Uh, the other one just comes from wanting to spin and not really, you know, worrying about all the extras. So we'll get that going. Oh, too much brake band. Okay, make my adjustment. And it really would help if I would decide how thin I want to spin this. I don't really know yet. Uh, I do have my spinner's control card. Uh, if you've never seen it before, let me grab it. It's on the Louette, which is right next to me. I'm going to be banging around over here as I try to get this thing off the louette. Okay, so here we go. This is my spinner's control car. And basically what it's telling me is that if I want to make a single or a two-ply of a certain uh, thickness, that this is the width of the single I need to spin. Of course, we all know that when things are wet finished, fooled, and all that kind of stuff, they're going to grow a little bit depending on the fiber and the way you spin. So there's a range here. 19 through 22 and different gauges have different ranges but that pretty much covers that anything within that wrap per inch and so if i decided i wanted to make a sport weight i would have to make sure that my single was the size of the sport weight now i don't know how well you can see that but that's well small so actually that would fit into the fingering so when i get done i should have a two-ply fingering um, if that's what I want it. That's how I determine. And then I let it ply back on itself. I have a good look at it. And that's going to be lace weight if I don't do something thicker. I don't really like lace weight for the most part. Um, not really. But I'll spin it if I have to. Now, I'm about 18 inches from the orifice. And I tend to spin really far from the orifice. I'm going to slide the camera back just a little bit if it's possible to see, or maybe I slide the wheel for it, so you can kind of see me draft since I am so far back. Okay, now I'm using a, a worsted draft, short, backwards, draws, and the length of my drawback depends on the length of my fiber. The longer this Angora is, the further back I can pull. So if I was doing something significantly shorter, it would be really short draws. And this is not going to be a truly worsted yarn because I, I did run it through the drum carter. Even though when I feed Angora through the drum carter, 
I do feed it end to end. I don't just like ram it in there. When I'm carting things that I clipped myself and there are definite ends, uh, when it's something else like this and it's just kind of jammed in the bag, you really can't do that. The further I move away from the orifice, the better it gets, and you can't really see me. So maybe next time I have to do this with the glasses so I can, or set the camera angle up a little different so you can actually follow me. But I'm just, uh, I'm keeping the twist from going up into the drafting zone with the left hand. Sometimes people will ask you, are you left to right hand spinner? I don't think it makes a difference. It is whatever you're comfortable with. I am right handed, but I am controlling the twist with my left hand. And oops, look at that. We can, I can always pull that out later. Or you just not worry about it. I like to move your arm, but I'm not that obsessed. It doesn't have to be machine perfect. And then a lot of times when people say, well, it doesn't have to be machine perfect, they mean, uh, well, just do whatever. And I don't mean do whatever, because if you're making a pattern or for a client, as I talked about in my other video, you want to be an intentional spinner and you want to make your yarn for whatever it is you want to make it for. But that doesn't mean that, you know, you have to obsess over every little teeny piece. Okay, now, anyway, Angora needs a lot of twists. You hear that all the time. So how do I know how much twist is enough twist? Uh, this is something you learn by trial and error and instinct, okay? So I just know, with I don't have to count my treadles. And you might want to count your treadles at the very beginning when you're first making uh, yarn. But I just kind of have a general feel for how long I'm holding this fiber. And like I said, if the longer the Angora is, the less time I have to hold it because uh, it's just, it's longer. That's the way it is with long fibers. Long fibers, you don't really have to hold them. Even if they're slick fibers, you don't have to hold them and put as much twist in them as you do with short fibers. So. Even as if it's a short fiber, that um, a shorter wool, or even something that, that'll have a different scale, uh, it's short, it's going to need more twist. Uh, if it's longer, it's going to need a little less twist. If it's slicker, it's going to need more twist. If it's a more coarse wool, it'll need less twist. So you just kind of have to get something in between there. Okay, so now you can see how I'm not pulling back as far as I was the first time you saw me there. And that's because I have reached a part of the fiber, which is shorter, which is one of the reasons I carded it. Because normally when I clip my own fiber or even pluck the English Angoras, um, I set aside after it reaches a certain length, or I should say, if it's under a certain length, then I'll set that fiber aside and I won't use it. So this is not really a problem. But if I'm, I'm carting this right here, I'm gonna run into patches that are shorter. So I have to stop, slow down and deal with those. Spin them slightly different. Okay, so we've got to the end of there. And now I'm going to join the yarn. And it works the same way on the drop spindle as it does on the wheel. All I'm doing is allowing the twist to go up into the next piece of of fiber, okay, my, what I've got up here in the drafting zone. And when they latch onto each other, and I just go ahead and continue spinning. Okay, uh, how thick my yarn is, is depending on how much fiber I allow into the drafting zone. How do I know that? That just comes by experience. It's a muscle memory thing. It's an eyeballing thing. It's experience. It's knowing what's in my triangle and how this fiber is going to smush down and twist together. When it's in this drafting triangle, that tells me um, how thick it's going to be, you know. And I'm just treadling along. See, I have too much there. I saw that when it went in. And that's because there are a few shorts in this fiber right here. 
from second cuts. Don't do second cuts, okay? If you're clipping, then when you clip off a chunk, um, I always blow off the ends when I clip. Whew, give a little puff, and I blow these little pieces away, okay? And then uh, I only get one pass, one pass, clip, then I have the fiber in hand. If I want to neaten the rabbit or I feel like I didn't get too close enough, then all that has to be done after I've removed all my prime fiber. That way you don't get these little, you know, clips in there because they cause nips. But it'll be okay. Oh, so there that goes off of there. Yep, it'll be okay. I can still spin this. I gotta go back and find my end. Okay, and then you can see me pulling on this, right? And it's not coming apart. So I know that I have enough twists in this. And I, somewhere in the room, uh, I have some Angora singles, and they're just fine. They're not falling apart, okay? So if I, I've got enough twist in it. And I, I was trying to take a picture of uh, me hanging a uh, tube of deodorant from the singles. It held just fine, but I... Uh, because of the singles and their twist hanging upside down, it kept wanting to spin, and I couldn't take it with one hand. So, but it's, they're not like really weak. Angora is a lot stronger than we think it is if it's spun correctly and handled properly. Of course, depending on which bunny it comes off and some other factors, but it just it's more durable than we like to think it is. I was reading a post this morning in one of the spinning groups on Facebook, and the lady was saying how she just likes to watch people spin. And it, it kind of reminded me, if you've ever seen that slow knitting. Uh, and you know, slow knitting is really cool, except they're, I think they're all speaking in a Scandinavian language. So, um, I don't really understand what they're saying. And so it's kind of hard to um, follow along, but it just, it, it just made me think maybe I just want to make a video where I'm just like spinning. I don't know. I have to think about that. Okay. So basically that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. And once I have it all spun, I will show you how I ply. Of course, there's always more than one way to ply. But since I just like, I'm so used to only having a few bobbins. And with the shock, the, the ladybug, I have five bobbins, so I don't really need to do this. But then I don't like splitting up fiber and all that kind of junk, you know. You gotta try to make sure it's even and you have like leftover in your ending and flying. So for me, it's much easier just to do a ball. And I know for some people, center pull balls are not their favorite thing. So you just have to decide what's gonna be your method. Okay, I'll be back in a little while. 